What do I say now? Action. Oh, yeah. Oh, action. action. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry. Let's go. In action. Okay, so... Season one of the Soulful Restoration podcast. It's been a long way. Uh, we've really journeyed through and did a lot of introspection. Hence, it was the theme was our place in the world. Where should our place in the world be after the season? Wherever you want it to be. I think that's the whole point um, of the exercise of introspecting. Um, I think at the beginning we said, your place in the world is everywhere, no way, right? You are here, there, everywhere. Um, but the end goal of the season where you should be by the time you get to the last episode, is that a place where you feel closer to your wholeness? If you haven't figured out what your wholeness is, you should know where to look. You should know what your point of development are. Because what happens is sometimes we know what we need to fix. We're just not ready to fix it. And with this season, I wasn't saying let's fix everything at once. I was saying let us be aware. Let's bring it to the table because what you are aware of, you can resolve, right? You can work towards it. You can work on it. So I think our place right now, the different places that we will be at, but what's most important is that we are more conscious and cognizant of ourselves at our core essence that is okay hold on are you intending to 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 look there there, yeah yeah, yeah. not looking all over the room i'm looking there there and there because there's more than one person in the room and that kind of like has so i'm trying to filter that is it bothering you must i look here no, no, I just wanted to know if you were doing it. Yeah. Intentional. I'm good. Okay. Okay, ma'am. Okay. That is so weird because my next question is, look around the room. Oh. <laughs> Hello, Pick everybody. three items that would help you in describing the season. Woo. <laughs> three items. Yes. Um, do the people count as items? Because they're all looking at me like, choose me, choose me. <laughs> Ooh, this season. That's hectic. Okay, so in the room, first of all, we have an hourglass. Um, and that for me is time. <laughs> um, time is a very important resource. It has, to create this platform has taken time. To uh, To bring each episode has taken time. Um, the work we've done behind the scenes, the time you spent with the podcast, the time you spent like reflecting on the episode. So yeah, definitely time. So that's one. Two is lights. <laughs> so God, so yeah, we've got lights. <laughs> we've got lights. We call them the sun. No, it's not the whiskey bottle. Put that down. <laughs> it's the lights. Um, and that is literally because we've brought a lot of things to light. Um, I think a lot of things get, you know, they overcome us because we keep them bottled up. Um, fear is a big thing. Like it actually exists. But we're so fearful of everything without ever facing anything. So we don't really know what we should be afraid of and what we shouldn't be. So bringing things to light actually shrink the, the monster, so to speak. And number three, people. There are people in this room. <laughs> there's the team in this room. Um, there's the team outside of this room, the people that have prayed for us, um, the people we've interacted with. But what all of that says, right, the people, is that we are more together than we are alone. We may experience things as individuals, but we have each other to lean on um, and teamwork really does make the dream work in every shape, size, and form. Mm. Mm-hmm. We've had about eight episodes. 
Um, we've had a few Q and A's here and there, but centrally, we had eight episodes. Yes, the ma'am. number eight symbolizes <laughs> new beginnings because the seventh, the Sabbath is seven plus one, which means something new. So, what sort of newness or new lens should you be looking at the world now that we've introspected now that we've found our God uh, we've calculated the price of proximity <laughs> we've done all these wonderful things within ourselves how is Amo supposed to show up after this whole process Whew. that's a difficult one because it sounds like I'm dictating to you like which is something I don't do. Mm-hmm. Um, but how should we be showing up? I think we should show up as people who have restored hope. Because people that have restored hope in ourselves, in humanity, in life. You know, when you show up like, I believe something good is going to happen. I believe my time will come. You show up with a different energy. You show up intentional. You show up cheerful, hopeful. Um you're more passionate about everything that you do. So I would say at the end of this, and just in life, you know, going forward, we should show up as people that have renewed and reformed hope, you know, the hopeful generation. I think that will push us to act, you know, more faith-filled as well. I think faith, we've spoken a lot about it. Um, Yeah. Let's do a quick SWOT analysis with my favorite analogy, a rose. What was the root of the season, the stem of the season, the bud of the season, the thorn of the season, and the flower of the season? We are back with the biography. (laughs) We are biology in school, guys. So this is my favorite analogy. We're back with that. Okay, let's take it one for one. What's the first one? The root. The root. Which is what kept us anchored. Mm. Spirit. Spirit kept us anchored. It will always keep us anchored. It's held space for us. It has educated us. Um, it might be weird for some to know that during the course of this whole season, I did not outsource information. Um, even the books um, and quotes that I referenced came from a previous time. Like I wasn't reading them just for this episode. So it was a lot of downloading on my part because I feel like that's how this kind of work is and should be done. It's a matter of downloading from the spirit and bringing out what needs to be said at that point in time. And I say no more, no less. (laughs) So that has really kept us anchored. And then STEM. What's the STEM? What, what, what is the stem? What was the pillar? The pillar of strength. <laughs> what is the stem? Okay. The pillar. The pillar of strength. <laughs> okay. Um, the team. Without a doubt, the team, um, everybody that was involved in bringing soulful restoration to light carried us through. Like no one was, without anyone, if anyone was missing in this team, we would have fallen short. So, yeah, definitely the team. And then our thorn. (laughs) The thorn is still going to be the thorn of logistics. But Mm. that's like, guys, anything that has more than two people in it, you need to be planning and planning well. But um, the thorn doesn't hurt that much anymore. (laughs) And then the, the flower, right? Ooh, the flower for me has really been the feedback, seeing people walk into the full bloom, hearing people say to me, Lyric, that episode actually shined a new light on things, um, gave me a new perspective, or it actually pr- showed me that I wasn't crazy. You know, we go through a lot and when someone says something like you've just like been hovering by yourself and it feels like no, I'm not alone. I'm with somebody else. Someone gets me. At the beginning, when we started, I said, my sole mission is that I've, I want our souls to meet and shake hands. And that will happen by shared experience. And so those moments have been those shared experiences between me and the viewer and me and with you guys, the team, um, on and off camera. So, yeah, man, definitely our, our feedback, our work has been, has been the flower. 
Mm-hmm. And the bud. Can we still have a bud at the end of the season, though? Yes, because maybe <laughs> something is lingering at the end. Um, what's lingering? Uh, the bud is going to be all the questions that are going to come um, post the season. Some things you're going to think about three months from now, a year from now. Like, so all the pending questions, all the pending realizations, all the pending discoveries, those are the buds of the season. Okay. And then courage has been a theme, a reoccurring theme throughout. It has been a mm-hmm. takeout for each and every episode. So now that I have done the cultivating, I have done the uprooting, this garden now, it's clean and clear. And here I'm faced with this task of being courageous. Where do I start? <laughs> um, you know, when they talk about consistency, and they say the only way to be consistent is by being consistent. Mm-hmm. The in- only way to be courageous is by being courageous. Um, it's by doing, right? Um, courage is shown in the moments where you feel like withdrawing, where you feel like sitting down instead of standing up, when you feel like, let me just be quiet instead of speaking out. That those moments, and you know it, you've got that feeling in the pit of your stomach where you're like, I should say something, but for the sake of comfort, for the sake of peace, for the sake of whatever, I won't. That's the only way to be courageous is to actually be of good. Bible says be of good courage, which means it's a it's a doing word. It's an action. You just get up and do it. You don't feel like, um, I think I'll just wait until it comes and arrives. No, you. when you know you should do something, do it scared. Do it nervous. Do it if you're the only one doing it. Do it with no support. That's when your courage takes root and takes shape. It's like a muscle. So like being consistent, <laughs> to be courageous is to simply be courageous. Okay, this was my least favorite question. <laughs> but anyway, what was your favorite episode and your least favorite? And I don't mean necessarily about what was more exciting or mm-hmm. what was more personal to you in that moment. Because sometimes the bad things that happen are the good things. So mm-hmm. maybe an episode <laughs> for you revealed something about yourself that you didn't know. And that was bad and good because now you realize there's work to do. That's the bad part and you realize, <laughs> oh, actually, I'm impatient or whatever. Mm-hmm. So what was your favorite and your least favorite episode? Oof. I don't think I have a least favorite episode. I actually don't think I have a least favorite episode. Um, I have a difficult episode. It's not So it was not my least favorite, but it was a difficult episode to put together. And that was the restorative power of ritual. And that was just because ritual is such an intricate process, It's but it's also so vast. And I was like, oh, guys, I feel like we're opening a can of worms, you know, um, because of so many things happening, people's misinterpretation of it. And I was like, is there enough time in one episode to unpack? So that one was a very difficult one to put through. Um, but I think we got the point across. <laughs> Maybe we'll come back and like decipher some more. But mm. I still think it's a very important practice for everyone, um, individually and communally even. Uh, my favorite. Hmm. Hmm. Finding God was my favorite episode. And that's only because it landed differently to what I had intended. <laughs> Absolutely. I thought we were all on the same page. It was just like, okay, because I'm just saying what needs to be said. But it landed differently. And I don't think that was anything I could have done by myself. I think while people were listening to that particular episode, God did the work. Mm. God does what he does. Um, and he met everyone at the point of their need. And that's all I could have actually asked for. So... That's what's up. Okay. Anything that you would have changed about the way you did things? Um, not just content wise, just logistically or any creative wise, any other way. <laughs> I would have had three episodes <laughs> and called it a wrap. <laughs> She's so, not kidding. Why am I talking for so long? 
Um, yeah, that's it. But genuinely, no, man. Um, we've had a really good run. I am surprised. Because <laughs> um, I usually just like tap out after two minutes of speaking. But here we are. No, I wouldn't have done anything differently. Okay, last question. What's next now? Skadile, Silapha. Some What's of next? us, the episodes evoked things we don't know about ourselves. It's hard. We have to be courageous. From that perspective, and I think you've answered that a little bit, but also just for the platform in itself. Mm, what's next? <laughs> what's next? Go do the work. <laughs> That's what's next. Go do the work. Go do your soul work. Okay. Um, this resource will always be here for you, but really go, go do the work. <laughs> mm, go do the work. As for whether we will be back as soulful restoration, I don't know. We are yet to see. There's always something to say. Like, there's always something to speak about. But I truly believe that I'll only speak when there's something to be said by me. Um, No more, no less. So, I'm sorry if y'all feel like this is not enough episodes. Do you still have questions? Yeah. Find us, find us on soulfulrestoration.com. We'll answer you one by one. But as for the content that we'll bring, we'll bring it when there's something to be said. Um, there's still, I mean, there's so much to say, but not everything requires this platform in this fashion. But personally, I would like to come back with a season two and have us talk relationships. Because yeah. y'all like relationships. <laughs> <laughs> y'all like relationships. And I say, when I say the relationships, people are thinking um, romantic. Jolo. Um, jolo. <laughs> Um, yeah, sure. Um, Cholo is probably just one of many. Yeah. Um, there's parenthood. There is siblinghood. Is it called siblinghood? Um, it is yeah, now. It is now. <laughs> it's called siblinghood, if you didn't know. There's friendship. There is the relationship you have with your colleagues. Relationships you have with your acquaintances. Mentorship. Like, apprenticeship. Heck, there's so many relationships and they all have a different set of rules. And oftentimes we try and like copy and paste. Mm. So what I do with the one relationship, I do with the other. And that's how they break. Um, when, we in, when we force things or we want to dictate how things should be rather than embracing them as they are, we break them. So yeah, maybe we'll come back and talk relationships. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Okay, the end. Cut. That's how we wrap up. It's been great, ladies and gentlemen. This has been Soulful Restoration. I am still Lyric, the curator. Until we meet on the streets or on social media, DM, you know what to do. Take care of yourself. Take care of the ones. Take care of those around you and that which surrounds you. Bye for the near future. <laughs> Ha <laughs>